Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, and I'll be reading verses 15 through 27. And this is what it says. Jesus is talking here. He says, If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells within you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. A little while longer the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. At that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while being present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, give us ears that hear your voice and, and hearts that receive you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. It was a little over a month ago, I received a call from my brother Bill. He said, do you remember the family reunion we used to go to? <laughs> I, that was a rhetorical question because, of course, I remembered the family reunion. We only went to one family reunion. We went every summer. It was July. It was in Harrelson, Georgia. And J July in Harrelson, Georgia, well, it was like walking on the face of the sun. It was a time where the Hutchinson family, which was my grandmother's family, that she was one of 14 brothers and sisters. And from everywhere would come nieces and nephews, people I only saw once a year, if once a year. They would all come together and, and the adults really enjoyed it because everybody would bring a little something and, and we would eat together and then the adults would get together. It was at a church in Harrelson and the, the adults would get together on the, the back porch of the church. It was screened in and they would banish all the children, the nieces, the nephews, the grandchildren, to walk outside on the face of the sun. And my brother, Bill, was the oldest of all the, 
the nieces, the nephews, the children, the grandchildren, the cousins. And he was the apex predator. It was his job to torment and terrorize everyone as they tried to find some shade somewhere. There was a dust bowl called a, a playground there. And, and usually that's where he would... I don't know if you ever saw the, the, or read the, the movie Lord of the Flies. Yeah, that's what it was like. It was like Lord of the Flies. We were all captured on the island of Brother Billy. And... Brother Billy would just terrorize and torment us the whole time. Of course I remembered the family reunion. I said, yes, I remember that. I've been trying to forget it my whole life. But yes, I remember that. He said, well, our great, 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 great uncle, Elisha Gray, had left that, that property for the church there that we, where we met. And as long as it was used as a church... It, the church was welcome to have it. He wanted to make the world a better place, so he left the property to the church. And he said, he stipulated in the will that if it was ever not used for a church, that the proceeds were to go to his heirs, his children, his grandchildren, then all those nieces and nephews, the great, 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 great nephews and nieces, would get the proceeds from the property. He said they've sold the property. And this is the lawyer's number. You can give him a call and let him know you're a part of the will. So I called the lawyer. And the lawyer said, yes, you hit, receive 1 287th of the sale of the property. It won't be much. I said, well, if it's enough to, put a, to buy a stamp, just put one on an envelope and mail my check to me. <laughs> But there, my great, 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 great uncle, Elisha Gray, had left an inheritance. He, he wanted to make the world a better place, so he gave to the church the property there. And he also gave to his ancestors, his children, those that would come after him, those that some of them, he, well, not any of them did he really know. They he was gone long before they were born. But we received an inheritance. Not much, about just a little more than the cost of a stamp. But we all received a little something. Well, did you know you've received an inheritance? A great inheritance, not a small one. Much more than the cost of a stamp. A great inheritance. The verse we read this morning was the last night of Jesus' earthly life. And he, he tells the disciples, the twelve and, and you and me, he, he says right here, I will not leave you orphans. That we've not been left alone, we've not been left unequipped. That he's provided. He's provided. And he's provided for you and me. Well, what is the inheritance? What is it that he's, he's left for you and me? And, and that's what I want to talk about, the, the inheritance that he's left. And verse 16, Jesus says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth. That Jesus has given you and me his help through his Holy Spirit. He's given his help. Now, some of your Bibles, that it, it's translated in many, many different ways. Some Bibles may have said helper. Some may have said advocate. Some may have said comforter. Some may have said counselor or companion or friend. It's a difficult word to translate. And so, the translators try and find the very best word that they can. In Coffee, the writer told a story about Bible translators trying to find the right word when translating the Bible for the Kare tribe in Equatorial Africa. They went to live with the tribe and, and they tried to find just the right word. It wasn't until one day that they were traveling out into the bush and there was a, a long line of porters that were going with them. They all carried bundles on their head, all of them except one. And they thought that this porter must be the, the, the boss to make sure that the others were, were pulling their weight and they were doing what was right. But 
they soon discovered that wasn't the case at all. That the porter that was not carrying anything on his head, he had a special job. And his title was the one who falls down beside us. If ever there was a porter that, that tripped or fell, if any of the porters were, became exhausted and couldn't carry their load, he was the one that would fall down beside them. He was the one that would help them up. He was the one that would carry their load until they regained their strength. The Bible translators had their word. And that's the good word for you and me. That Jesus is the one that falls down beside us. Jesus is the one that has the power to lift us up, to help us, to give us strength we don't have. And that power is the truth. The truth that, that he has strength that, that you and I don't have. The truth to res resist temptation. The truth of the assurance that we're not alone. The truth that you and I have received the great power of God. His help, it's available to you and me today. It's our inheritance. You have been given the inheritance of his help through his Holy Spirit. This morning, my invitation, the invitation is to you, is to receive it. Receive his help. It may be that you've been trying to do it on your own long enough. Or it may be that you've, you've fallen to emotions and feelings and, and what's most natural. It's very rarely that the emotions and feelings and what's most natural lead us toward the truth. Jesus. Jesus. It's his spirit that falls down beside you. It's his spirit that lifts you up. It's his spirit that gives you strength. Receive the Holy Spirit, the gift of his inheritance. Receive his help. But when Jesus is talking about what we've received as an inheritance, he doesn't stop there. Verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. And in verse 23, he says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus has given you his home as an inheritance. So often we think of, of Jesus' home as, as being off and away, distant, someplace removed. And so sometimes we'll, we'll call God the man upstairs. I like what John Ortberg tells a story about a friend of his, five-year-old daughter. She said, I know Jesus lives in my heart because when I put my hand on it, I can feel him walking around in there. <laughs> well, it's the truth. It's the truth. He's made his home in our hearts. It's a home. It's a home where we can feel and know that he's walking around in there. Many folks know that, that God is out there somewhere. But too often, they, folks see God as removed and, and remote. I read about the practice of a young mother that... At the end of the day, when she was putting her children to bed, rather than asking, how was your day? She would ask them, how did you meet God today? And that practice, that practice, at the end of every day, allowed her children to, to see that God had made his home in their heart. And everywhere they, they went, that God was there. And that's a practice, a practice, a practice that, that you and I need to know. It's, it's our inheritance. It's a gift that he's made his home, not somewhere out there, not upstairs. But he's made his home in our hearts. Several years ago, a teenager named James Dungy committed suicide. His father was the coach of the Indianapolis Colts football team an incredibly well-respected man. 
he took a break from the team for a while so he and his, his wife and family could make it through that difficult time. When he returned to the team, he was being interviewed. And he said, I want to thank the Colts organization for being with me through this time. But then he said something that everyone who knew him, they weren't surprised by it at all. He said, my faith in Christ is what's gotten me through this. My faith in Christ is what's gotten me through this. The way the Bible says it in 1 John 4.4 4, is greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. This world does have a hard time, trouble, tribulation. I don't know how anyone makes it through the loss of a child. But I do know that Jesus has made his home in, in your heart and mine, and he provides strength, power, presence that's only available through him. It's a gift. It's an inheritance. It's a power that's, that's greater because he who is in you, it's, his name is Jesus. And it's the Spirit of the risen Christ, the Holy Spirit, that is greater than any power in the world. This morning, I want to invite you to receive, to receive the inheritance that Jesus has given you, his home in your heart. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus talks, says he, he will not leave us orphans, that he'll give his help, He'll give his home. And verse 27, he says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Our inheritance is he's given peace. He's given peace. One of the stereotypes of Jews is that Jews worry a lot. I didn't put much stake in, in that until I read that um, the author, Arnie Plotkin, wrote a book called 14,000 Things for Jews to be Happy About. And he had written down, 14, he'd collected 14,000 things for Jews to be happy about, hoping, hoping to, to lift people up. Well, the book was a flop. That was until he changed the name of the book. He changed, it didn't change the book, he changed the title of it to 14,000 Things That Could Go Wrong and it became a commercial success. I don't think Jews have a market on that. I, I think worry is something that is deep within us that the more we practice it, the more we worry. And if ever this age is, is known by anything, I think that thing is, is worry and fear. I read a little poem by an unknown author. The author said he worried about the weather. He worried about his health. He worried about his business. He worried about his wealth. She worried about the children. She worried about her clothes. She worried about the neighbors. She worried about her woes. They worried about their taxes. They worried about their pets. They worried about the future. They worried about their debts. They worried, still they worried. They worried, but alas, they worried about a lot of things that did not come to pass. And that's the thing it is about worry. We worry about things, and the more we worry, well, you know, we can't do anything about it, so at least if we worry, we're doing something. Well, we're doing something that's killing us. It's killing us all. And it creates more worry. It creates, creates more fear. And Jesus has more for you and me than that. So what he gave us is peace. Not any peace. He says, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. This morning, it may be that you've been practicing worry for a long time. And it's the most natural thing in the world. 
claim your inheritance. It's a great abundant life that's been given to you and me. It's a life that's marked by peace. Because through his Holy Spirit, Jesus has given you and me peace. Peace. It's a peace that we practice. First thing every morning, we practice in praying for that peace. And the last thing every night and all day long, we practice the power of his Holy Spirit come and that it might stand guard of your heart, might stand guard of your mind, and we might receive that peace. It may be that for a while you've been practicing, practicing praying to a God out there somewhere. And it may be that this morning it's the first time that, that you've heard. You've heard that you've inherited his home the home of Jesus, that, that it's in your heart. It's, it's not out there somewhere. It's, he's cer certainly not the, the man upstairs. It's his home. He, he, his chosen residence is in your heart. This morning, I want to invite you to pray to receive him in your heart that you might know the power of the risen Christ. It also may be that you've not received his help. You've tried to do it your way for a long time. And you know what it is to stumble. You know what it is to fall. This morning I invite you to receive his inheritance that you know what it is to be lifted up. To be made strong. And I want to pray with you now to receive the help of his Holy Spirit. Pray with me. Jesus, you tell us plainly, clearly that you are our help. You are the one that gives strength. You are the one that gives power. That is the truth that guards our heart. That is the truth that guards our mind. That is the truth that gives us strength. Strength enough to resist temptation. Strength enough to know the assurance of your forgiveness. To know we're not alone. You've given that gift, that inheritance of your help. Jesus, there may be folks this morning that have been trying to do, to live life on their own and on their own terms that, you know, they may have said that they loved you, but they haven't been following your commandments. They haven't kept your commandments. They haven't followed you. I ask the help that we need. I ask for the home that we need. I ask for the, the peace that, that we need that comes, well, it comes from you and it comes only from you. Breathe the power of your Holy Spirit that we might receive our inheritance, every bit of it this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image, 
And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you. 